Kind of always had a calling on my life. I loved sciences, I loved the military, always wanted to help serve in that type of a capacity. And so I saw cardiopulmonary and it talked about trauma, critical care, respiratory therapy, ICU, emergency room, and I loved it. But they couldn't prepare us for what we were about to encounter. So around 2003, I got orders to uh, Ramstein, Germany. It's an Air Force base in Germany, and I was actually assigned, satellited out to Landstuhl uh, Regional Medical Center. And this is uh, the largest and one of the oldest hospitals in the DOD's inventory. And it's a major hub for evacuating patients from the battlefield. Aerovac and critical care air transport team. These were the two primary modes of getting patients from the combat zone over to Landstuhl. We would go down range as a team of three. We would take the critically wounded and we would bring them back for advanced care. The ops were fairly intense. So there was a lot that was going on. It was 24 seven, you know, inpatients. Uh, they don't go home. So it's kind of this care around the clock. So I would work 14 hour day, 12, 14 hour day in the ICU, just get home for dinner and would get the call that you gotta go out. There were times when there was just two of us therapists that were able to go out and do these missions and so it was go, go, go. I would leave Kuwait, Afghanistan, Iraq, back to Germany right after working a 12-hour shift. So again, it just wears on you. I thought that I was strong enough in my faith. I was like, I went to three different denominations before coming into the Air Force, and I'm good. I mean, I grew up in it, and I know the stories of the Bible. But my prayers did begin to change. I began to cry out for help, but still kept that private. What was on display was all of the stuff that I was good at. And if you was to look at my life, you would say, man, he's really good at the Air Force. He's climbing the ranks there. He looks sharp in church. But what I kept hidden in private was all my personal struggles so I became a master of the skies with suppressing that stuff. There's no processing of it afterwards. And what do you do? Do you go to work and say, hey, I had nightmares last night of what happened yesterday? No, you don't tell anybody. We have to be a strong warrior. That, that had to be the persona. And then I just kept it to myself and it just gradually got worse and worse. Tim's experiences speak to the constant reality of post-traumatic stress that every warrior and family member can face when navigating life's journey in the unique context of military life. The internal struggle, the feelings, the challenges experienced are all normal responses to abnormal events that only warriors and their families deal with. 
The difficult times are often magnified because there's little empathy or understanding by the people you're relationally connected to but haven't had these same experiences. This can lead you to a place of hopelessness, loneliness, and isolation, leaving you with the thought that no one understands, or even worse, no one cares. If this is where you find yourself, there's good news. There is hope. You see, everything that you've seen in Tim's life journey really relates to you finding strength for your journey. It's about discovering what it means to have an experience with God that isn't based on empty rules or religious rituals. Living your life as a warrior is about living with integrity, with excellence, and even when you don't have the answers. Every warrior and every family member of a warrior longs for love, a higher purpose that can only be found in a relationship with God. This is a life that provides meaning and clarity for everything that life throws at you. Jesus Christ offers you this life, a life with purpose, a life with mission and with hope and with dignity. This can be a crucial turning point in your life. You have a choice. You can continue on the path that you know defeats you, or you can take that step that sets everything right once and for all. A step that leads you on a path to wholeness and resiliency and it's really very simple. It all begins with a conversation between you and God. Just telling him that you need his help to continue in your journey. Own up to your mistakes and choose his help to make things right. And it all starts with a simple prayer. Jesus, I admit that I've done wrong things. I understand that I cannot fix this on my own. I need you to help me get it right. I choose to surrender to you and not my bad decisions. I want you to assume command of my life. Please forgive me and set me on a new course that leads to victory. In your name, amen. If you just prayed this with me, we'd love to hear about it please click the button below that says, I made a decision. And when you do, a warrior who is walking this journey and understands will connect with you and help you with what to do next. Or if you have a question or need someone to pray with you or to contact us for any other reason, just click the appropriate button below and we'll get in touch. God bless you. And we look forward to talking with you very soon.